The search for a missing Malaysian jetliner is still on. Families of missing Chinese passengers may set off for Kuala Lumpur tomorrow. And the town planning board starts discussions on the future of a Kowloon Tong site. Good evening. More evidence is mounting that foul play may have been involved in the disappearance of a Malaysian jetliner last Saturday. The investigation points to a possible hijacking since two passengers used stolen passports and at least five others failed to board the flight after checking in. Still no sign of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, which vanished over the South China Sea en route to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur. Fortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we have not found anything that appears to be objects from the aircraft. Given two days have passed with no word from the plane, experts presume all 239 people on board have died. So far, nothing has materialized from an earlier report that what appeared to be part of a plane door was spotted floating and collected sea samples of what might have been a giant oil slick from the down plane is now being tested. They also determined the sighting of an inverted life raft was not from the missing plane, but they are checking out another report of an oil slick. Investigators suspect the plane experienced sudden catastrophic failure because no distress signal was activated. The failure to find any plane debris as of yet points to a strong possibility the plane exploded midair and disintegrated, making it that much harder to detect small bits of the plane. The head of Malaysia's Civil Aviation Authority said a hijacking cannot be ruled out. Another red flag is that two passengers used stolen passports to board the plane. Malaysia's home minister criticized border officials who let two people of Asian appearance through immigration using European passports. With closed circuit TV video, Interpol is working to identify who the real passengers are. Today we've shared the information, both the biometric and the background information and the visuals. Authorities admit more is needed to prove the theory of a hijacking or bomb explosion on board. We need hard evidence. We need concrete evidence. We need parts of the aircraft. They're also verifying whether other passengers use stolen passports. Also being investigated is why five other passengers checked in for the flight yet failed to board the plane. In the meantime, a total of eight countries are taking part in the international search and rescue operation, dedicating ships and planes and thousands of man hours. Families of passengers on board the missing Malaysia Airlines flight may set off for Kuala Lumpur early tomorrow morning. Some aren't even sure if they want to go there when there's hardly any new information. Among the passengers were artists from a painting association who were on their way home following an exchange in Malaysia. That story from Jenny Lam. About 50 family members of passengers of flight MH370 are gathered at the Lido Palace Hotel in Beijing. Local authorities have expedited their passport applications so that they can go to Kuala Lumpur to wait for news of the search. Some of them complain that Malaysian Airlines is prepared to let them stay only one week in Kuala Lumpur. What if there is no news after a week, this person asks. Others, though, aren't even sure if they want to go there when there is close to no information on the whereabouts of their loved ones. The airline has given the family some money to get through this difficult time, but the amount has not been revealed. It will also consider chartering a flight to bring them to Kuala Lumpur if many people want to go there. Officials from the ministries of Foreign Affairs, Transport and Aviation have met with the families. A senior official from the Foreign Affairs Ministry revealed that a friend of his is on board the missing flight. But the families became so angry and agitated during the meeting that the officials had to leave the venue. 
About 24 people on the flight are friends of Jin Ming at the Beijing Chinese Painting and Calligraphy Association. He didn't go on the trip himself because he had another engagement. Today, Jin Ming and his friends came to the Summer Palace to offer prayers to those on board. We are good friends and we often organize activities together, he says. The association's deputy secretary, Tian Chu Fan, explains that many of the artists who went on the exchange in Malaysia are highly regarded. They can now only pray for a miracle that their friends can soon be found. Jenny Lam, TVB News. Both sides in the dispute over Ukraine's Crimea region continue to dig in ahead of a referendum that separatists hope will lead to reunification with Russia. As James Aiken reports, Ukraine's new prime minister is preparing for a trip to Washington in the hope of finding a solution to the standoff. Thousands gathered across Ukraine on Sunday to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the birth of the country's greatest poet and national hero, Tara Shevchenko. In the Black Sea port of Odessa, the mood was more aggressive as people demonstrated against the Russian occupation of Crimea. Tempers flared as pro- and anti-Russian groups held rival rallies across Crimea, where separatists are keeping up the pressure for reunification with Moscow. As the Kremlin continues to build up its military presence in Crimea, the push continues for a diplomatic solution to the crisis. Western leaders say an upcoming Moscow-backed referendum for Crimean separation is illegal and violates Ukraine's constitution. The message from the international community is that the referendum, like the military intervention, is working against Russia's interests. Russian intervention in Crimea has actually turned people in the rest of Ukraine against Russia, against Russia's influence and intervention. Uh, so there doesn't seem to be any popular support of any significance on the ground for such an intervention. It's aggression, it's intervention, and that's why we have doing everything to defend our independence and to defend our unity. Efforts continue to encourage dialogue through an international contact group, but progress is slow. The European Union could soon hit Russia with sanctions that include travel restrictions and asset freezes. We know Meanwhile, Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk will meet U.S. President Barack Obama in Washington on Wednesday. The United States says the meeting will focus on options to peacefully resolve the crisis while respecting Ukrainian sovereignty and territorial integrity. The invitation to the White House meeting also sends a clear message that the U.S. considers the new Prime Minister to be Ukraine's legitimate leader for now. James Aiken, TVB News. And as well, President Nicolas Maduro is lashing out at comments made by U.S. Vice President Joe Biden as anti-government protesters continue to clash with security forces. During a visit to Chile, Biden called Venezuela's situation alarming and accused the government of violating solid standards of democracy. Maduro told supporters Biden should worry about the misery brought on by poverty in the United States and not get involved in the affairs of Venezuelans. Demonstrators have been holding rowdy street protests for nearly a month to demand Maduro's resignation. They accuse his government of using excessive force against protesters and are fed up with inflation, food shortages and a rising crime rate. A bizarre twist to Mexico's assault on drug cartels. The Mexican government officially confirmed that the leader of the Knights Templar cartel, Nazario Moreno Gonzalez, was killed in an early morning shootout yesterday. This despite a claim that Mexican authorities had killed him back in 2010. The government insists a fingerprint analysis will prove that Moreno was in fact killed just yesterday. The Mexican military had tracked him down at his cartel's home base in Michoacan. Moreno's death and the capture of Joaquin Chapo Guzman two weeks ago brings an end to two of Mexico's most powerful drug lords. And ahead in our newscast... An alliance about bid rigging related to old building repair works. Kevin Lau recalls last month's chopping attack on him. And a priceless painting to go on local display.